Hello guys, in this tutorial you will learn how to create this kind of a 3D animation using some building footprints data using QGIS. Now you can apply these concepts for other types of data as well. So let's go ahead to the tutorial and see how we can create this kind of a cool 3D map and a 3D animation using QGIS. So to get started with the tutorial, first I'm going to add one of the base layers, the OpenStreetMap. I'm going to go to Web and Quick Map Services and from here I'm going to select the OpenStreetMap. Now in case if you don't have this OpenStreetMap, you can always go to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins and simply search for Quick Map Services and then you can actually install this external plugin because with the fresh installation of QGIS you won't be getting this plugin. Uh, once you have this plugin, it's quite easy to add the OpenStreetMap as a base layer. Right, so the data that I'm going to be using for this uh, example is some building footprints data from UK. So I'm going to navigate to the place where I have kept the data through this browser panel. And I'm going to open this 3D map using QGIS. And you see that I have some building footprints over here. I'm just going to drag it and drop it over here. So it's actually corresponding to some places in Leeds and you can see that the data also actually comes from OpenStreetMap. So these are the building footprints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to visualize this building footprints not in a 2D way but in a 3D way. So if you're using one of the latest versions of uh, QGIS, what you can do is you can simply go to Weave and go to New 3D Map Weave. Now what that does is it's actually going to open up a new window for us like this. And in that window, we have some functionalities to sort of transform this 2D data into a 3D format. Now I'm going to maybe increase the transparency of my base layer, the OpenStreetMaps layer, because my attention is actually on, on the building footprints itself. Yeah, I think something like that should be fine. And you can see that those transformations also also get applied to this 3D map itself as well. So you can see that on the right hand side you have some options to sort of tilt your map to top and bottom and from here you can sort of tilt the map clockwise or anti-clockwise and you can use the the scroll wheel to sort of flatten out the weave to tilt the weave from top to bottom. So what you can do is you can actually press the scroll button and you can simply drag your mouse down a little bit so that it'll actually create this kind of a side angle weave like this. And then from here you can simply zoom in and zoom out like this. But still you can see that the data is actually flat, means the data is actually still in, in sort of a 2D mode, even though we have changed the angle by which we are looking at the data. So in order to transform this data into a 3D view, what you can do is you can right click on this building footprints layer that we have, go to properties, and from here select the 3D view option and select single symbols. Now, in case if you do have the elevation value of each building, you can actually select the elevation value of each building by going to this option over here under extrusion and select field type in double or string. From there, you can actually select uh, select the corresponding heights if you do have the heights for each building. But in my case, actually, I don't have the heights for each building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of add an extrusion where the whole thing will pop up just by a specific value that I'm going to specify over here. Maybe let's put a value about 15 and see how it looks and then click apply. And now you can see that it actually generated sort of the 3D view for us. Maybe I will try to go for a value of about maybe 25. Yeah, that sort of pops up the building according to the footprint that we provided through this shape file. Now you can change the colors as well. Maybe I'm going to go with a bit of a light bluish color, something like this or maybe make it a bit bit more darker. Yeah, something like this. And when you click OK, you can now see the map in the form of a 3D weave. Now you can actually use your uh, scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. And also you can use these different buttons that you see over here. Either you can tilt down or tilt up like this and go to eastern or western side like that. Or even you can use your right mouse button. Just select on your right mouse button and then Try to move your mouse and you will see that it'll actually sort of create a zooming in or zooming out effect towards your area of interest. Similarly, you can just pan it around like this as well. Now, let's say if you want to transfer this into sort of an animation. Well, that's also possible. You see an animations button over here. What you can do is you can click on that and just to get an idea of the default animation, you can just hit on play button over here and that'll sort of show you what the default animation looks like. 
Now the default animation can be controlled by adding keyframes manually over here. So over here you can see that the starting keyframe is at 0 seconds and the ending one is at 5 seconds. So these things can be changed. Now let's say I can set, set the weave which I would like to have at 0 seconds to be something like this. So you just select the corresponding 0 second keyframe like this. Let's say I would like to start it from somewhere over here and let's say add at 5 seconds, I, I don't want to have a completely zoomed out view. I would still like to maybe pan around to move the camera to maybe this side. And I can add a new new keyframe, maybe something like 10 seconds. And by 10 seconds, I would like to sort of have a fully zoomed out view, something like this. So now let's play and see how that looks. You can see that the camera is actually sort of first moving to the eastern side and from there, from the point that we set, it's moving outwards, sort of giving an impression, something like a drawn footage that we're actually leaving the our area of interest. Yeah, let's play it once more. Yeah, now in case if you would like to make some changes, you can always just go to, let's say, zero seconds. And if you would like to change the the location of the camera at zero seconds, you can just pan it, pan it around and set it like this. And let's say at five seconds, I would like to go to this this corner of the city. And maybe about at eight seconds, I would like to come somewhere over here. And by around ten seconds, I would like to be somewhere on this side, yeah, something like this. Now let's see how that animation would look like. You can see that during the first part it's going to the eastern side and then it's coming to the southwestern side and then it immediately just moves out from the city. Now I feel like the distance between the time allowance between the last two keyframes are actually a bit too steep so I'm going to maybe okay, I'm just going to get rid of this 10 seconds keyframe and I'm going to add a new one. Let's say I would allow time to be about 18 but still I would actually still assign the same camera view somewhere over here so that it zooms out with this kind of a view. All right, now let's see how this one looks. So I guess that's about it for this tutorial and if you did like the tutorial don't forget to give it a like and we will be publishing more tutorials like this quite frequently so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you would like to be notified as soon as we publish a new tutorial. So I'll see you in the next one.